Hello there. Today I thought I'd have a look at Contra on the Amstrad C... No. It's Griser. Let's take a look at Griser on the Amstrad CPC. Here we have the 3 inch disc variant of Grisor, which I picked up for the modest sum of £30. On the front you get two redrawn images of Arnie from Predator, separated by a very Giga-like alien. It is in fact identical to the Contra artwork. In fact, before we go on, let's clear up that the game is in fact a direct port of Konami's arcade classic, Contra. The game was simply renamed for European 8-bit releases because upon its 1987 release, the Nicuagarin Contra Rebels was a hot political topic in these parts. Griser then sounds equally as menacing whilst avoiding any unnecessary contention and is certainly better than the NES iteration Probotector, which was developed for launch in the German market, where you're not allowed to blow the hell out of fellow humans in-game. Talking of opponents, the storyline is fairly tenuous. It goes that the Durs from planet Suna have infiltrated Earth's defence forces and set up a stronghold. Armed with an atmosphere processor, their plan is to trigger a new ice age and take over Earth's resources. As Lance Greiser, your plan is to put a stop to their devious plans. And quite why humans are helping defend these aliens is unknown and slightly bewildering. Inside the box we find our single sided 3 inch disc, a folded instruction sheet in a variety of languages, and an advert for the game Combat School, another ocean release licensed from Konami, of which a free demo is actually included on this disc version. However, mine seem to incur some loading issues resulting in a crouched frog like character rather than a ripped running soldier. Upon loading the main presentation, you are presented with our mercenaries, Lance and Bill, and reminded that this is an ocean game licensed from Konami. We're also presented with the programmer's names, which is nice. If you have a 128k machine, you can then choose to have either in-game music or sound effects. You can't have both, unfortunately, and it feels more right to just go with the sound effects to me. And this is what 64k owners are stuck with, whether they like it or not. Either way, you're then thrust into a world of gorgeous, although somewhat blocky colour, and almost inevitably killed. You're then killed again, and again, and again. Griser takes some pretty rapid reactions, along with many repeated attempts. If you're not dodging bullets, then you'll need to be prepared for mid-bridge explosions, which you either need to know about already, or just leap quicker than you've ever leapt in your life. As well as these obvious perils, walking into an opponent will also render you lifeless, and if you lose three lives, it's game over sunshine. Although you do earn an extra life for completion of each stage. Power-ups are provided, such as the three-way gun or savage laser beam, and these offer much needed aid over your single bullet weapon. However, if you die, then you're back to your pea shooter. You can shoot in a multitude of directions on a variety of platforms, offering multiple ways to progress from screen to screen. It gives a feeling of freedom and control, and would make its way to various other games including the brilliant Gunstar Heroes on the Mega Drive. Like Contra, play is progressed through a variety of perspectives, including a pseudo three-dimensional tunnel sequence and a fixed screen sky blasting arrangement reserved for boss battles. All of which are pleasing and offer an impressive mix of variety given the fairly short length of the title. The Amstrad port has one less level than the original game, and excludes a handful of bosses, leading to some regarding the C64 version as superior, but there's no denying that the CPC version looks incredible and plays very well. It can be a little difficult to see what's going on at times, especially for anyone with a degree of colour blindness, and although it's slightly shorter in game length, it can still prove an absolute menace to get through. Although, invincibility power-ups, such as these placed on the vertical scrolling level 4, can allow you to actually plough through the entire level with speed and ease. Unfortunately, the simultaneous two-player mode from the arcade is replaced by an alternating implementation, forcing each player to take turns, which pretty much saps the fun from that aspect. 
If you complete the game, then your reward is confirmation that the Durs have greater playing skills than anticipated, as the Earth turns into a baked potato and everyone dies anyway. These gripes aside, Greiser on the CPC is a pretty spectacular port. It's a game which appears to be always on the lips of CPC owners, and despite the lack of smooth scrolling, one of the very few games which shows off the hardware's potential. For me, and many others, it's the best 8-bit home computer version by a country mile. So there's Greiser, a fantastic game if you've got the reflexes of a cat and the determination of an ox. Otherwise you might want to pick something a little bit easier. See ya!